hello everyone last time we have created this geometry uh, if you want to know how it's done you can find the link below so today we are going to mesh this for this we choose fluent meshing as it has its own advantages uh, to do we can double click on the mesh and uh, which is always advised to go double position depending upon the system you can choose the number of processor the meshing of this geometry will be done in seven stages uh, as it's shown in step seven steps from inputting geometry to merging surface uh, now as you can see i have used uh, six uh, processors for my for processing and uh, if you uh, after clicking import geometry if you don't find the import geometry button at the uh, at below then you can just resize your geometry use what press and you will find it so for generating surface mesh, we should look into four parameters. First, the minimum length scale, or the maximum. Second is the maximum length scale. Third is the number of cells that we want in the gap, and the where the gaps are, where the meshes of the gaps will be, and the edges of the surface, or both the surface and edges. So as you can see over here, my geometry has. Mm, has just cubes, red cubes over here. The bigger cubes are the bigger cell sizes, and the small cubes, are the small cell, small cell uh, lengths. If you go close, if you have a close look, look into it. Uh, uh, when where the surface is very uh, small, uh, and says has optimized it to have small surface size, small mesh over there. And as it goes radially outwards, it does the mesh size increases. But at some spaces, we need fine mesh of one one mm. As you can see from the geometry surface uh, near to the baffle wall and the surface of the reactor, uh, the gap is only four mm. So at those points, we cannot have four mm maximum length scale. That will create only one cell over there so to do that we will, we will can have one mm cell size so that it will create four cells at those points in the Russian blades the Russian turbine blades or the baffle blades they are only two mm so if we have um, only two only one single edge uh, single gap over there then that will create only one cell over those points to increase that we can increase to two or four as per our convenient so since uh, we have chosen one mm, it will automatically create the uh, four mm uh, two uh, two cells at those, those locations. But if our maximum cell length is four, but we still want two cells at those surfaces, then we can have those gaps as two, and it will give us two surfaces or four surfaces as per our requirement, depending upon the level of accuracy we want in our simulation. So our surface mesh has been generated over here. These are the important parameters that we always look into. As you see the advanced option we have set the maximum skewness is 0.8. So you can see it is it hasn't crossed that limit. And the average skewness we always have to mention in the literature. So to share the topology, you can you can see there are three options: uh, fluid with fluid with solid, fluid with no void, and fluid with the solid and void. So these are the three type of geometry that can be possible uh, in the answers while well, discussing the geometry. So if there is a solid, you will get a third option to choose to which surface, which bodies are solid. Uh, otherwise, you can choose fluid and uh, with no void. Since our geometry is that type. So we will we'll just choose the fluid with no void and uh, wherever there is uh, internal surface set it will convert it to uh, internals and uh, the voids will be shared. So this is the topology and so by applying this we will share the topology. Uh, while generating surface mesh, it is a common practice that we should maintain a skewness below 0.9 to give um, better result. Uh, since that's why we have chosen 0.8 maximum skewness. If it uh, it has crossed 0.9, then we have to go back and remesh. Now our topology has been set, and our walls has been will will be defined. Now we have to choose individual walls, and we have to 
name it like uh, which which is our outlet which our which is our inlet like that so to do that you can just click on any surface and you can go right click it and change it to which the type like you can then name it and you can change it to pressure outlet these are the surfaces which is going to rotate along with the rotating fluid so i will name it as a rotating shaft and uh, by choosing this it will automatically choose all the surfaces in the right corner in the left corner of uh, the tree and you can right click it and name it uh, there so it will convert all those as uh, rotating shaft rotation shaft 1 2 and 3 so you can directly change it to change this property now we are going to going to name, name the sparger uh, <coughs> by changing this so we can adjust what how much portion we want to see so you can you will choose choose each portion of the sparger there is a demerit to ansys missing that you cannot choose individual faces when in normal facing you will get more uh, control over here you can choose more faces each and every curve over there to if you want to give any uh, specific boundary condition at those locations so now you can choose each and every point inlet and name it as as inlet on this uh, so similarly uh, you choose it and uh, right click on the left bottom corner of those planes <coughs> and name it as inlet so all those nine points will be considered as, as inlet now you have to change since these are walls um, so you have to convert it to as velocity inlet choose all of them and right click and convert it to velocity inlet now all the internal parts has been on uh, internal walls has been defined but only the um and the reactor wall has not been defined so as you can see i have named the reactor wall uh, only thing that is left is the baffle so you can choose all the fluid body name uh, and surfaces and right click it as baffle, baffle wall so now um, why, um, if you update the boundary then you can see next is the volume what is the what are the volumes so there are three volumes one is fluid body rotating body one and rotating body two so you just you don't have to do anything just go to next by update region next is creating um, so you see the moment is uh, transferring from the uh, inner inner rotating bodies to the outer rotating bodies so to measure to have more accurate result we will put inflation layers over there uh, we will put three inflation layers in, in the internal surface so we will choose uh, manually which surfaces we want so as you can see over here uh, i'll go to tra so tra smooth transition one and there I'll I'll choose uh, the body where we are on, on which we need to have our inflation. That is uh, fluid region, fluid body. Then we'll go to uh, grow on which surface you want to grow the uh, inflation layers on, and those are the internal internal walls. Uh, you can choose it manually like this. You can have more inflation layers on the baffles or on the r sap if you want but that will only complicate only compli uh, increase the number of cells inside um, since the moment there is not much momentum transfer from them uh, so now our um, inflation layer has been defined now we will generate the volume mesh so there are two types of mesh here polyhydra and tetrahydra with hexacore or tet mesh so we will choose polyhydra with hexacore uh, you can see this mesh this looks really good uh, it has hexacore our inflation three inflation layers as can be seen here clearly and the surfaces has been converted to uh, hexagonal shapes now, wherever it is needed to have fine mesh, ANSYS has made it automatically fine with 0.1 mm. 
mesh size so you can you can uh, increase the mesh size on the individual region region based meshing there is option region based meshing you can change in this so next is we will uh, convert the merge the surface similar type of surfaces like the baffles or so you can just name, give it one baffle wall since we do not need each and every wall to be um, there each and every wall to give individual conditions we can just merge them as one baffle wall and you can give uh, whatever wall condition we need over there so we can do it by going to the boundaries of the top of uh, the left boundary and uh, from there you can go to manage uh, where you can merge all these surfaces one common practice uh, i will advise is uh, whenever after merging you just untick the body uncheck the body and uh, merge the other bodies otherwise uh, it will merge two different bodies or which you don't want always keep that in mind it may take some time because it will it is binding it so uh, now i think now, now there is only uh, the interior parts are there so now we will merge the uh, rotating bodies as you can see all the rotating bodies have the similar name type so from there we can say okay these are the rotating bodies you can just select all of them and merge it so we have created this rotating body 1, rotating body 2, walls we, and we have merged it. But we will not merge the uh, internal walls to the rotating bodies, to the uh, bla imp impeller blades. Because the condition of the walls will be different at the internal wall and the impeller blades. Similarly, we will merge the sparger and R sap. You, if you remember previously, there was, those are three surfaces, and R sap has four surfaces. Similarly, we can merge them all to have one surface. Once the surface merging, merging will be done, then we will go and check the quality of the mesh. Uh, and uh, it's a common practice to have a quality uh, more than 0.5 and uh, and uh, the closer the quality towards 2.1, it is better. And uh, the skewness would be less than 0.9. The lesser it is, the better it is. The closer to, one, closer to 0, the better it is. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Uh, in the next video, next chapter, we will do the same messing with uh, normal messing. You can see the difference between access messing and uh, normal messing. Mm. And uh, please like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, that will give me more motivation to work.